Hi students, all of you welcome. Welcome to Sunil Engineering Academy. I am Sunil Kumar Bandaru. Students, in this general science, physics, recently we have started force and motion. In that, lot of topics completed. Only one topic is pending. Newton's law of gravitation and uh, weight and mass differences and Kepler laws. Okay. So in this session, we are going to discuss those and these sessions are useful for all your competitive examinations wherever there is a general sign. Okay, if you want previous, click on playlist. You can find out uh, previous sessions. And all of you don't forget to click on like button in this video. Okay, so let me check up to which we have completed. So motion, equations of motion, projectile motion, Newton's law of motion. Okay, Newton's first law, second law, and third law completed now. Now, Newton's law of gravitation. Before going to the Newton's law of gravitation, let us discuss uh, uh, what is the gravitation. I think I have already given the gravitation. Gravitation is nothing but attracting force. In simple words, you can say gravitation is nothing but attracting force. If a body attracts another body, if a body attracts another body by a force body by force is nothing but by force is nothing but gravitation okay for example our earth attracts all the bodies so that is gravitational force of the earth okay so let us take uh, if an object if an object throw upwards upwards then it reaches certain height correct it reaches certain height comma after that it fall down after that it fall down because of gravitation of earth because of gravitation of earth okay and fruits fall on the earth example fruits fall on the earth Here is nothing but you can say gravitation force okay gravitational force let us take uh, newton's law of gravitation newton's law of gravitation law of gravitation so according to newton's law of gravitation if we have the two objects having mass m1 and m2 okay m1 and m2 those are displaced with the distance r r can say you can take d also not a problem okay if two objects having mass m1 and m2 are displaced with the uh, distance r okay then the the force of attraction between these two objects is proportional to product of those two masses by that a distance is square okay that a distance is square or can also take it as m1 m2 by d square okay r r d are distance between the objects distance between objects okay so if you take it is a r m1 m2 by r square if you take it is a d m1 m2 by d square okay so note down the force of attraction or the gravitational force the gravitational force between two objects the gravitational force between two objects is 
directly proportional to directly proportional to product of masses product of their masses and inversely proportional to inversely proportional to distance square na inversely proportional to the square of distance the square of distance between them between them okay so for example m1 comma m2 are masses of objects of objects then that force is proportional to m1 m2 by r square okay if you remove the proportionality constant you have to take one constant that is g m1 m2 by r square here g is the gravitational constant very important gravitational constant okay its value 6.67 into 10 power minus 12 10 power minus 11 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square units are also very important guys newton meter square per kg square okay this value experimentally given by henry cavendish not newton very important question experimentally given by scientist henry cavendish very important question henry cavendish okay f is equal to g into m1 m2 by d, uh, d square r r square r g m1 m2 by d square okay r comma d r distance between them between m1 and m2 objects okay henry cavendish very important question let us take a small differences between small g and capital g small g acceleration due to gravity Correct capital G universal gravitational constant. Universal gravitational constant. Okay. So this G units are units. Acceleration is nothing but meter per second square. These units are these units newton meter square per kg square correct newton meter square per kg square so if you forget also g is equal to f into d square by m1 m2 if you want units g is f into d square by m1 m2 so that means uh, here you can say force newton meter square per kg square okay if you write the dimensional formula here uh, mass power minus one you will get so that means negative master g has negative master okay that is also very important this g value changes from place to place changes from place to place but it is constant everywhere universally constant so constant everywhere that's value given as 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square okay for example changes from place to place means maximum at poles minimum at equators minimum at equators okay for example, in our earth, here we have the pole. Here 
we have the equator is the equator at equator minimum suppose it is a maximum okay but here constant constant at everywhere okay for example if g is acceleration due to gravity on earth then gravity on moon is equal to gravity on earth by 6 so that means the gravitation or the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is less than that of 6 1 by 6 times of the g on earth okay so that means it is changes but here it is always same on earth on moon always same constant only okay so these are the very important differences here in the same way let us take uh, the differences between uh, mass and weight okay the differences between mass and weight let us take a mass mass m units are kg weight very important formula weight w is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity so units Newtons. Units are Newtons. Very important. Okay. The difference is between mass and weight. Mass is a constant of everywhere. It is constant everywhere. Okay. May not change from place to place. May not change from place to place but what about this weight weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity d changes from place to place now d changes from place to place so weight changes from place to place okay for example mass m is 10 kg on earth for example with uh, let us take 60 kg for simple calculation mass m is 60 kg on earth in case of mass on moon is also same 60 kg only no change okay 60 kg only no change but if you can consider weight weight on earth is 60 newtons then weight on the moon is equal to weight on earth by 6 why because g on moon is equal to g on earth by 6 na. so gravitation acceleration due to gravity is 1 by 6 times. So, weight on the moon is equal to weight on the earth by 6. Very important. But mass is constant. Okay. So, then weight on the moon is equal to 60 by 6. That is 10 newtons only. That is 10 newtons only. Okay. So, mass is a constant term everywhere. But weight changes from place to place. Why? Because acceleration due to gravity changes okay note on this too important so if you can consider always weight of object on moon is equal to weight of object on earth by 6 by 6 okay next one next one weight of a body in a lift this one also important weight of body on lift or elevator 
ओके लिफ्ट ऑन एलिवेट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द लिफ्ट इज मूविंग यूनिफॉर्म वेलास्टी इन ए स्ट्राइट लाइन लाइक दिस ओके नॉट अपवर्स नॉट डाउनवर्स इफ द लिफ्ट इज मूविंग विद यूनिफॉर्म वेलासिटी इन ए स्ट्राइट लाइन मोशन in that case in that case weight of the body is equal to same uh, weight of the so uh, body is nothing but exact weight of the body is only okay so whatever the weight we feel that is same like uh, weight of our body okay but whenever the lift or elevator is accelerating upwards or accelerating downwards in those two cases we feel okay we feel other than our body weight maybe that is some higher or some lower okay let us take those two uh, points okay for example in the lift if you are okay just feel you can understand okay i think all of you uh, uh, utilize the lift now so you can get the idea okay so if first case if lift or elevator is for example stationary if lift is stationary or moving with uniform speed in straight line motion straight line motion okay that is in horizontal motion in those cases our weight of body is equal to exact weight that is true weight of the body true weight of body okay correct if the lift is stationary whatever we feel that is uh, weight of the body that is you can say it is the apparent weight of the body that is whatever we feel imaginary weight of the body okay weight of the body or apparent you can call this one as apparent apparent means whatever we feel imaginary okay so note down here apparent means imaginary we imagine imaginary weight okay second case if lift is accelerating upwards just imagine if you are in the lift and lift is accelerating upwards in this case what do you feel we feel that we gain the weight correct whenever the lift is accelerating upwards we feel that we gain the weight that means uh, our weight is very high that means our imaginary weight is very high that is apparent weight of the body is greater than true weight of the body okay so in accelerating upwards the apparent weight of body is greater than true weight of the body okay why because whenever the lift is accelerating upwards then and gravity is downwards so whenever there is a opposite direction then their relative relative weight is more okay for example if your body is moving with 3 meter per second another body is oppositely moving 2 meter per second then what is the relative speed Then total three plus two that is five now. So that means higher. So here also acceleration due to gravity is downwards and lift is accelerating upwards means the relative weight will be higher. Okay, that means whatever we feel the weight or the imaginary weight or apparent weight is greater than the true weight of the body. We feel like that. Third case, if lift is accelerating downwards 
downwards means both are same direction okay the lift we have the person he is moving lift is downwards and acceleration due to gravity is downwards for example if a person is moving with 3 meter per second another person moving with 2 meter per second then what is the velocity of this person with respect to 2 3 minus 2 now that is 1 so that means here decreases correct in the same way here also both are in the same direction lift is moving downwards and the person also moving in the same direction means we feel that we are losses of it okay for example we can experience this one whenever we are in the lift lift is accelerating downwards we are feeling that we are losses of it for example if you that is if you are sitting in the joint wheel whenever the joint wheel is going to become maximum height from that maximum height it is going downward means what you feel you feel that you are losses you are total you are losses you are weight okay so that means we feel that our weight that is our imaginary weight apparent weight of body is less than that of true weight just imagine if you are in the lift and whatever you feel that is the answer okay if it is accelerating downwards we feel that we are lost the weight okay for example if the lift chain broken then what will happen then lift is freely falling in that case we feel we lost our total weight our weight is zero that means our imaginary weight becomes uh, we feel zero okay so but don't try like this okay so note down the fourth point if the cord of lift is broken broken then lift freely falls freely falls in this condition in this case this case apparent weight of the body is zero apparent weight that means whatever the weight we feel body is equal to zero okay so these are the four points is weight of body on the lift or elevator okay so taking the four cases just to feel that if you are in the lift okay the next one kepler loss of planetary motion just uh, they will give one question only who stated law of planetary motion that is Kepler that is only the very important point in this uh, loss okay remaining laws are not at all that much of important but better to note down okay so if you note down then it will be remembered for you it is very easy loss only okay Kepler laws of planetary motion has given three important laws let us take the first law okay let us take the first law for example if we can say sun is at the center okay so all the planets rotating around the sun in elliptical orbits in elliptical orbit. the sun is at center all the planets rotates in elliptical orbits okay so for example here we have d we have the d you can take any numbers this time taking some example okay so note down all the planets move around the sun move 
around the sun in elliptical orbits elliptical orbits okay elliptical orbits with sun is being in rest being in rest position okay and second law he said that not down then only you can get idea the line jointing the planet or the line joining the planet okay so for example if a b c d are planet the line joining the planet and the sun sweep sweep equal areas in equal intervals of time equal intervals of time that is nothing but the time of travel from a to b is equal to c to d like that. the time of travel from a to b is same as c to d okay that means you can also define this one the velocity of planet around the sun is constant so equal distance in equal intervals of time equal area means equal distance in equal intervals of time distance by time is nothing but speed or velocity so distance by time equal means distance by time is the constant that is velocity is the constant okay velocity or speed is constant velocity of planet around the sun is constant very very important law. okay in life you can simply understand from this so all the planets for example our earth rotate around the sun in a constant velocity there is no sudden variation suddenly high speed suddenly low speed suddenly high speed suddenly low speed so it is not like that okay if it is like that we are also feeling that we are rotating okay why we are not feeling if our earth is rotating around its own axis and also around in the sun uh, sorry revolving around in the uh, revolving around the sun but why why we are not feeling like that why we are not feeling like that we are not feeling like around, uh, we are rotating around the sun or we are rotating around its own axis why because this sun they are this air planets okay let us take example sun example earth rotating around the sun in a constant velocity whenever there is a constant velocity then we feel that we are not rotating okay for example if you are if you sit uh, in a train okay if you sit in a train if the train is moving with the same velocity let us take 100 km per hour if it is moving with the same velocity then at the time what we feel you feel that you are you are sitting just like in your home correct if you go with the three tire three tire ac uh, with the having uh, good suspension okay suspension suspension for bogey if the train is moving a constant speed then we feel that just we are sitting in our home we don't have any jerks and all those like that why because if anyone is moving with a constant velocity means okay then we may not feel like uh, rotating okay that is the reason so that is given in the second law okay? so velocity of planet around the sun is constant very good uh, uh, law okay and we can also say that the consequence of this law the consequence of 
this law is that this law is that the speed of planet the speed of planet increases if it is near to sun the speed of planet increases when planet is uh, closer to sun planet is closer to sun and the speed of uh, the speed of planet decreases of planet decreases when it is far from sun decreases when it is far away from sun. okay that's why also can say that uh, the planet near to the sun completes one revolution in very less time. The planets very far from the sun uh, completes the revolution in very high time. Okay. Okay, that means we can say planet near to the sun having high speed. Sun having I coming to the next law that is the third law third law is nothing but t square is proportional to r power 3 t square is proportional to r power 3. this is the third law. okay so note down square of the period of revolution t is nothing but time period period of or time period of revolution of planet is planet around the sun like around the sun planet around the sun is directly proportional to directly proportional to the cube root cube cube of cube of mean distance cube of r is the mean distance of planet from the sun in distance of planet from the sun okay that means whenever the mean distance is less the time period is also less okay so you can say mean distance is less time period also less that is near planet near planet completes revolution in less time in less time okay so that is given in the third kepler okay so these are the three kepler kepler laws here the very important question is who stated law of planetary motion that is nothing but kepler okay so weight of uh, object differences between mass and weight small g and capital g and gravitation and newton's law of gravitation okay so we have almost completed uh, this force uh, force and motion okay if any topic is not covered here no need of worry that will be covered in topic wise mcq session okay so after this theory i will also complete the topic wise mcqs before the exam no need of worry about that okay and if you like my classes don't forget to click on like button so many students just watching and forgetting the click on like option okay so by clicking on the like you may not lose anything and i may not get anything just it may be encouragement to me okay so on so many students uh, are watching my classes 
and they are benefiting then it makes me somewhat of fan okay may not get anything more than that okay students and if you have not joined in the telegram group please try to join in the telegram group in that i have also provided uh, the pdf i have already shared the pdf of electricity topic and magnets and magnetism in the telegram group okay so try to join in that and uh, download okay so and uh, will soon i will also update uh, this motion topics okay okay students if you still not click on subscribe option subscribe button on this channel please click on subscribe button and also please share to all your friends thank you so much guys